Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, we have uh, got an identity. Uh, we've got a simple side and a complicated side. So the obvious thing to do is to start with the complicated side and try and simplify it because there's not going to be that many ways we can do it. Um, so, okay, we've got lots of different trig functions going in here, on here. None of them are being squared, and there aren't any two twos involved. So it really looks like we're not going to have to use, at least not to begin with, any of the uh, special identities. But it may well be a good idea to um, express these things here in terms of maybe everything in the identity. Um, but start off by expressing these things here in terms of sine x and cos x. So just use the definition of cosec x. You know, it's 1 over something, 1 over whatever, times 1 over something else. And this will be a fraction, okay? This will be a trig function over another trig function. And then you need to think whether or not you've got a common denominator, okay? So this will actually have 1 over something times 1 over something else. So you've got two different trig functions on the bottom here. And then for minus cot x, you can have 1 over a trig function. So uh, you may need to think about a common denominator here. Oh, you're not going to get 1 on the top. You're going to get something else on the top. So this, is with only one trig function, you're probably going to need to, simp to put this fraction so it's over the same denominator. So two different trig functions here. This one here is minus... Uh, something on the top over something on the bottom. You're going to need to look at the trig function you've already got on the bottom. It probably matches one of these. Um, so you're going to need to multiply by the same bracket on the top and the bottom so that this denominator matches this denominator. So now you need to look. You can put it over one fraction. You're going to have 1 minus something, something times something on the top all over a common denominator on the bottom. Okay, and then you've got to hope that something helpful happens here. Ideally, you hope that there's going to be a squared trig function in here, so you're going to be able to use one of your standard identities. And if that happens, um, you can begin working from the other side. So tan x, if you've turned everything into sine x's and cos x's at this first stage, then you can bear in mind that tan x is itself a fraction of one of those things over the other. So that's what you kind of hope this is going to turn into. So a um, bit of perseverance, make sure you get the correct common denominator, it should drop out.